Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to talk about things and items that you need to inspect before and after going off-roading on your Montero. And it's specified in the repair manual, the things that you need to check. So we're going to talk about those things right now. So grab a cold beverage, sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Check it out. Let's go now, right now. Oh shoot. Oh damn. We got water in here. What the f what? Hey, how's it going guys? Your friend Jim here. Um, welcome back to the channel. Uh, it's been a while since I posted a video. The last one we talked about the... Um, actually, it was in Spanish. We talked about the um, the uh, boots on the Rack and Pinion. But um, welcome back to the channel. Please like, share, and subscribe if you haven't done so and you're here. Uh, if you're here, you probably want to talk about four-wheel drive. Four-wheel drive driving on the Montero, off-road driving on the Montero. Uh, as you know, the Montero is a very capable vehicle, and as you saw by the introduction, uh, we recently took it out. We went to Azusa Canyon here in Southern California, and it performed flawlessly. Montero is a very awesome vehicle to do that sort of stuff. Um, but there's some precautions and some things that you need to check before you hit the road, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, actually, there's a section in the repair manual that tells you things to check, th things to inspect before and after uh, you go, you go uh, off-roading, uh, especially an area where you're gonna cross through water. Um, there's some things that you gotta check and we'll, we'll go over those things, we'll pinpoint them on the document and we'll go to the vehicle to check them out, exactly what you need to do, what you need to inspect. Um, and you need to do this as a precautionary measure, uh, mostly because obviously you want your Montero to last you for many, many years and you wanna maintain it uh, in, in properly working order so that every time you go out, it performs flawlessly as it was designed to do. Uh, so let's get into some of that stuff. Uh, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Thank you for subscribing. Uh, if you're just here watching and looking at my videos, uh, please go ahead and subscribe uh, and hit the notification bell so that I, you can get notified every time I, every time I submit a, a video. Uh, and I greatly appreciate that. Honestly, really do. So let's get into it. Let's go over the document stuff first, and then we'll go to the car and uh, we'll go underneath and, and check out some of the items. All right, let's do it. Right, guys so here is the document that talks about uh the treatment they call it treatment before and after driving through water and it's it, it basically pinpoints certain areas underneath the vehicle that you need to inspect uh prior to taking the vehicle uh, uh crossing water uh just as a precautionary measure to make sure water doesn't get into those items into those components so just uh to read here real quick uh it says inspection and the service before driving through water. Vehicles which are driven through water or which may possibly be driven through water should be subjected to the following inspections and maintenance procedures in advance, meaning before you go through the water. So it says inspect the dust boots and breather hose for cracks or damages. Replace them if cracks or damages are found, obviously. So number one thing that they're talking about here is the ax the front axle boots. So just make sure the boots are not broken. Uh, also the, uh, the boots on your rack and pinion, these guys here. Uh, right side and left side also they talk about the breather tube on top of the front differential there's a little hose and that's a little breather hose right there so check that out uh, the rear axles as well make sure the boots are not ripped or anything like that if one of these boots is ripped then obviously you have to you you will get water in there and then you rust the, you run the risk of those bearings rusting out inside so the other thing over on the front differential actuator there's this little dust boot as well so make sure that this is properly installed and there's no rips or cracks or anything like that on this uh, component. Also the transfer case area, make sure everything is uh, okay here. And then there's this other little section here on top that's like a grommet that goes through the bottom of the vehicle to the inside of the vehicle carrying wirings and stuff, wiring. So just make sure everything is seated properly right there. And I'll show you that under the vehicle here. So this is basically things that you inspect before you go on your journey before you go and you're gonna cross through water you're gonna get the Montero uh, in across, across the river and you're gonna get some water 
at the bottom of the vehicle. So basically check this out prior to doing that. And then after you come back, after you're done crossing the water, you went and you had your fun, um, then you, these are the items that you need to check to see if they, uh, any water entered these items. And basically the three items that we're talking about, we're talking about the front differential, the transfer case, and the rear differential. So basically to check to see if these are filled with water or have water in them, you basically uh, remove the filler plug on each one of those items. Filler plug on the transfer case is this one. Uh, filler plug on the front differential and also the rear differential. So you just remove the filler plugs. Maybe a little bit of fluid is going to come out. Uh, but basically you're looking for no water to come out. If water comes out, then obviously uh, then you you uh, have you have to re you have to do a service on it. Change the change the um, change the fluid. Put some fresh fluid in there. Uh, a lot of times, also, if you can't tell if water's in there, uh, it's probably going to be pretty obvious because if water is in there, then a lot of it's going to come out. A lot of water mixed with the fluid. Um, but if the fluid is like milky in color, then that te that tells you that it mixed with water. So yeah, you'll be able to tell because of the level of it. All right, guys. So basically, that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and take a look at it underneath the vehicle, and we will go from there. All right. All right, guys, so I got my little handy dandy little flashlight here. Got this thing on at Lowe's. Super cool because, look, you don't need a switch to turn it on and off. You just wave your hand like that, turn it on, wave your hand, it turns off. So, super handy dandy <laughs> flashlight. All right, so, <laughs> so let's go over some of the items that we talked about on the vehicle. But before we do that, after I came back from wheeling on Memorial Day, there might be some damage in the bottom of the vehicle. I don't have armor or anything like that, which I'm now going to get from Luso Overland uh, because I, it's, it's pretty important. I just I was just down there and I noticed some some damage to the front uh, to the front cover. Uh, I'll show you here in a minute, but uh, let, let's do that. And then we'll do the inspection that the repair manual says to do. All right, let's do this. Let's take a look, see what the damage is from uh, our trip at um, uh, Sousa Canyon on Memorial Day. I can already see something. Let me turn the camera over so you can see what I'm looking at. And you can see a big scrape right here. And then this thing got cracked. So, scrape here. Okay, so well, well, I'll take this off and see what else goes on. It's going on in there. Other than that, I don't see any anything major other than just regular regular scrapes here on this uh, cross member. Nothing to worry about though. Uh, down there, I don't see anything major. Nothing with this pan. Nothing with this uh, transmission fluid pan. Um, this other cross member, a little tiny scratch there. There are more scratching over here. Um, I don't see anything major here. This thing is on there properly. There is a little, little scratch here on the bottom of the fuel tank. But this fuel tank is pretty well protected from the factory. However, they do have, Luso Overland does have the uh, covers, the protectors, the shields for this. Um, moving back a little bit further, I don't see anything out of the ordinary. No scratching, no major damage at all. So overall, Montero did amazing. Alright guys, so look what happened to this cover. It just it broke. Probably hit a rock or something. 
and uh, just kind of messed it up. See that? So, I wonder if I can fix it. I'm trying to fix it somehow. But this, this is the material. I thought it was just plastic, but it's like some kind of fiber. It's some, some kind of fiber material. See how it's got the little fibers. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try to put it back together, like shape it back together, and then JB weld the hell out of it. So I always like to keep my vehicles original, so that's why um, I'm gonna try to fix it. Okay, so let's go back here and see. back to that document in the repair manual things that you have to check before you go wheeling obviously they want you to check the axles so make sure the axles are okay the boots rack and pinion boots axles I'm gonna turn the camera again axles front uh, boots here on the axles and uh, and then here's the, the passenger side same thing just make sure everything's okay and these are okay these are the original axles the original boots they're not ripped at all on my vehicle but when they do when i do encounter this issue where because it's a matter of time these will rip uh, as a matter of time um, i'm not going to replace the axle i'm going to rebuild it and uh, montana montero if you follow his channel he has a great video on rebuilding the front axles because he was saying, and I agree with him 100%, he was saying that the original axles are way better than the replacement part ones. So it's just way better to rebuild rebuild yours, rebuild your original, rather than buy a replacement one. What's going on with the actuator? So, according to the repair manual, they want us to make sure that, see these little holes right here? see this hose it comes over here the top of the front differential it makes a u-turn and it connects to the differential um so before you go wheeling you got to make sure that this hose is properly connected properly connected so to prevent any water from getting inside the differential this hose goes up up there by the fender here's here's a little tube it goes from rubber to metal and then it goes to rubber again i believe a little bit higher up there so we'll, we'll t I'll, t I'll i'll show you where it ends over there all right so the front differential uh vent ends up right here so you can see a little a little tube with a little cap right there um this guy right where is it I'll touch it right there this guy right there that is the uh front differential vent and this is like a little cap so if this is off you're probably going to get water in there however over by the differential there is a one-way valve so the hose will be filled with water but the water may not make it all the way inside the differential um, but it's always good to inspect if you don't have this little cap on there all right guys but the other thing while you're down here the other thing before you go wheeling is to make sure that this is installed correctly this is the actuator, the front differential actuator, and it's got this little boot here. And then just make sure, before you go wheeling, make sure that it's properly installed like this one is. And then if it's not properly installed, oh shoot. Oh damn, we got water in here. What the, f what? how did water get in there? Okay, okay, hold on, hold on, let me take it off. Hang on, I just gotta pry it from the top here. Okay, here. Okay, well, I, I, we don't have that much water, but I did, I did, when right now when I pulled it, we do have, a, we did have a little bit of moisture. So, this one has a little tab that you pull out. So, I could see it's got some grease from last time when I added grease to it. So, I don't see big puddles of water. I did see a little bit of moisture there 
when I when I got this thing loose, but it's not a big deal. So this is a good opportunity to pack it in with some grease again, right in here, right in here, and then just put it back together as it as it should be. But you know, it did its job. Obviously, this thing was all underwater, so I don't see any water in there because so the little little boot did what it was designed to do. So good job, good job, little guy. So I'm gonna leave it like this because I'm gonna add some grease in there. And uh, here's the diaphragm. I was not maybe a good idea to remove this hose. You see water coming out of here, then water went inside the diaphragm, and you have a junk diaphragm. So same thing with the other side. This guy, no water in there. This is a little vacuum tank. Now there's no way to check if you have water in there, but it's pretty if your hoses are connected chances are that little guy is okay okay so this is in the repair manual the boots the, the the axle boots this guy here make sure those are okay before you go wheeling um if you move further back we have our transfer case and so let's see here. So we'll keep going. I'm trying to see that. I'm trying to look for that part that they were talking about where all these, all the wires or all the, uh, yeah, the wiring and everything goes into the vehicle. Let me see here. So we have some. Oh, right here, right here. Look at this. This is what they're talking about. So it's here's the transfer case. Here's the wiring. And then here's the grommet. You see the grommet right here? Basically, the repair manual wants you to do an inspection on this thing from all angles. Make sure that, make sure that it's not, it's properly seated seating here make sure that it's you know it's not ripped or anything like that so that's one thing they want you guys they want us to check and then the other things obviously are the rear axles the rear boots this guy these guys here make sure they're not ripped or anything like that and then this guy and that guy all right so the here in the rear differential there's this little hose right up here and this would be the this would be the vent for the rear differential the breather pipe um so just make sure that's attached properly and it's not disconnected or anything like that because water will get into the rear diff if this guy is uh is disconnected or broken or whatever all right guys so let me i'm just gonna put some grease here and put this back together and then the next thing they want us to do after you go wheeling uh they want you to remove the the filler uh filler bolts or filler plugs here on the front differential transfer case and rear differential and then see if any water comes out of here so let's just do that real quick just for for showing purposes i know that it's probably going to be okay but uh let's go ahead and take a take a look at that there's the old Montero, Jose's Jeep. Look at all the people crossing over there. It's not too deep. All right, so let's remove the oil filler plug on the differential here. So let's see, righty tighty, lefty loosey. So we gotta go the, this way. So let's take it off. Damn it. Tight. It's tight. I'll tell you that right now. There. See? No water. And the fluid should be like right at the at the level here. So we got some fluid in there. I can't put my pinky all the way in there, but I don't I don't it's definitely fluid. There's no water in there. So that's one thing to check. 
after you drive over water okay so now let's tighten it back up just give it a good snug in there all right so now let's move on to the transfer case transfer case fill plug is right here yeah right there okay so this one same situation remove this guy and make sure no water comes out of here we do have a little bit of oil only so there there's no water so we probably have a little bit of oil because it's it's uh the, the way the angle is on the Montero it's probably it's not I don't think it's overfilled filled because of that when I changed the oil, I, I made sure I put the proper amount. So, all right, so put this guy back on there, tighten it up, give it a little, give it a little snug. There we go. Okay. Now, same thing with the rear diff. Right here. And just, I just want to make sure. Camera is yeah, I can see it. Okay, so sometimes instead of prying on it like that, sometimes giving it a little hit like this, almost like simulating an impact, is easier. It's a way to go to tighten to what to get some of these crack some of these loose. So we'll get this guy off, and we do have a little bit of fluid coming out but no water so let's put this back on there there we go no big deal no water and that's what we want to see we want to see absolutely no water coming out of these guys this guy just get it a little snug there we go all right so that's what you do that's what you do to your Montero before and after wheeling. Those are the things that you inspect. Those are the things that you uh, check before and after. And uh, you, gotta, you gotta make sure that you do that because if you don't do that and you do have a ripped axle, uh, a ripped uh, rack and pinion boot, anything like that then you may think think twice about it before going because you know you're gonna get water in there and you know that it's if you leave it like that for a long time it's gonna it's gonna mess it up so it's probably best uh to inspect it do the repairs that you need to do before hitting the trail uh just uh just that'll you know make that'll assure you that your montero will last you for many many years um and also when you come back check those three items make sure no water got in there and uh, that's pretty much it. So, yeah. All right, so this concludes the video in terms of the items that we need to check prior and after going off-roading on your Montero. I hope that some of you found this information useful, helpful, and uh, you will check those items on your Montero before and after you go wheeling uh, to ensure that your Montero will last you a very, very long time. Um, Again, uh, I want to appreciate for those of you who stayed till the end and are watching right now. Thank you so much. I am adding, uh, I hope that you enjoyed some of the footage that I, that I added on my video from the day we went wheeling on Memorial Day. Uh, after this message, I'm going to go ahead and upload the rest of the footage so you can take a look at that. There's some pretty cool vehicles out there. It was, it was a lot of fun. I definitely, definitely want to go back. Um, anyway, thank you guys so much. Greatly appreciate it. Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. And I will see you on the next one. Remember, the next one, we're going to fix the exhaust system. Not the exhaust, but the catalytic converter. So I'll go ahead and do that. And I will document everything. And uh, hopefully, uh, you'll get something useful out of it. All right, guys. Thank you so much. See you on the next one. Bye. 
All right, guys, so we're in the San Gabriel Mountains. Brought the Montero out here. It's the only Montero here. Look at it, there she is. I already took it in the mud. She did perfect. All the river crossings were like excellent. So, but I was hoping to see more Monteros out here, but I don't see any. You got the snacks? Uh huh. No, no, I'm good. They're very light. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Let's fucking go. Let's go, bro. There's a big baby right here. 